Welcome back to Singapore Tonight. We're keeping up our coverage on Parliament's hours-long discussion on the Ridout Road case. MPs on both sides of the House raised questions on issues such as potential conflict of interest, as well as whether Mr Shanmugam's son was involved. And ministers took more than two hours to explain the steps they took. Senior Minister Teo. Dominating much of the parliamentary exchanges was the question of why Mr Shamugam approached the Deputy Secretary of Law for information on listings instead of engaging an agent to ask SLA. The information given to Minister Shanmugam for his personal use by the Deputy Secretary would appear to have been privileged. At minimum, the man on the street would not have equal access to this information and would have had to secure it at some cost. I think there's an issue whether the DS had to decide whether this is a matter of work and if it's a matter of work within his responsibility, uh, is it contingent on him to answer? But I asked the Deputy Secretary, Senior Admin Service Officer, so that Ministry of Law knew and there was total transparency, instead of asking SLA directly, he will usually let the Permanent Secretary know and as senior admin service officers, he and the permanent secretary will be able to go beyond me and report to the head of civil service or the prime minister if they felt that anything needed to be brought up to that level. Secretary. Mr. Shalmugam says that SLA has given out the list that states what properties are available for rent before. He adds that it's not privileged information and that he did not receive preferential treatment. There was also an inquiry into allegations involving his son. I would also appreciate particularly if the minister can address allegations that the contract for works relating to the properties were awarded to a firm of which Minister Shamugam's son serves as CEO called Live Space. My son tells me that his company does not have any contracts with SLA, nor did they do any work on the readout properties for SLA. You get these utterly false and defamatory statements. Do these people really believe that CPIB would not have found this out if it were true. I say to these people, you want to come after me, you come after me, but leave my family alone. But at the heart of Monday's session was the question of a conflict of interest. I would like to ask uh, SM to comment on the code of conduct for ministers, uh, which speaks of an apparent and a perceived conflict of interest. And a minister should not be in a position where his financial interests might be even conceivably conflict with his uh, public duty. On hindsight, whether there are specific actions that they undertook that they now believe, at the very least, uh, could be perceived as a conflict of interest, keeping in mind that we operate as uh, public servants and perceptions are very important for public figures. In my report, I found that there was the potential for a conflict of interest to arise. A potential. However, Minister Shamugan identified this potential conflict of interest early, beforehand, and took steps to prevent it from actualizing. He removed himself from the chain of command and recused himself from any decision-making for the matter in question. MPs also question if ministers living in such private properties might distance them from the rest of society and engender a picture of inequality in Singapore. I've done this now for 35 years, 20 years as a backbencher and 15 as a minister. I've spent more than half my life in parliament and more than half my life with Chong Pang. I do not hide what I earned as a lawyer. It's public knowledge. My residents judge me by my heart and my commitment to serve, not by how much I earn and where I live. They know I am there for them, that I am there to help. Mr. Shamagam added that the homes he lives in does not affect his ability to serve and empathize. He added that the savings he earned as a lawyer helped to buy his family home and pay the rental at Rhino.